that. Good afternoon. Um, thank you for the hospitality and invitation to be with you today. Uh, thank you as well to the marshals who are keeping us safe today. Thank you very much uh, for, for volunteering your time. Um, I am one of the pastors at Reachway Church, which is just a few blocks on the other side of downtown uh, from where we are. Um, my family and I have made a commitment to, to do two things primarily, and that is to uh, mark our lives after the way and words of Jesus and to look to our holy book, the Bible, for guidance. Um, both of those commitments uh, flow into my words today. Um, I do recognize the tension of the Christian faith and where it draws its origins from, uh, the people and the geography um, in which we uh, have a connection to historically. Uh, that is, of course, no reason uh, to turn a blind eye to what have truly been ungodly behaviors um, with blood of women and children and men being spilled innocently. Our Bible has things to say about how we are to view one another. And it says even in the midst of our individual uniquenesses, our backgrounds, and our present circumstances, we are still to view one another and treat one another as though we are all one. There can be together living side by side, male and female, child and adult, local and foreigner, and whatever other categories we seem to place ourselves in, and yet we are to view ourselves as one. This makes the senseless killing wrong, and it also makes us all hurt. That pain is real, and that pain is valid. I ask myself, what does God think about war and conflicts like this? And our Bible provides us with an image of how God envisions the future of our world. It says, in the last days, those who once fought one another will turn their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. This is why we call for ceasefire immediately. With this vision in mind, hours before his own death on a cross, and at the moment of his own arrest, Jesus disarms his own disciple who took up a sword to defend him. In this moment, Jesus says, put your sword back in its place, for all who draw the sword will die by the sword. This is why we call for a ceasefire of all swords, guns, and bombs. I also ask, where is God in times like this? For sometimes it can seem like God is absent in these moments. I do believe the Spirit of God dwells amongst people in our world today. I also believe that in a mysterious way, God is embodied in the lives of those who are on the underside. Therefore, I believe God is with the hungry. I believe God is with the naked and the sick and the hurting. I believe that God is in the rubble of destroyed buildings. I believe God is with those who are crying out, including us today. With these things in mind, I long for ceasefire. I long for the immediate and comprehensive distribution of humanitarian aid. 
I long for nations to choose the way of peace and nonviolence, and a day where all people living in every nation, speaking every tongue, are living together as one. We today can be peacemakers right where we are. However, peace is not made by the example that is being set to us with violence, but rather we choose moments of love and compassion and forgiveness and words and actions that support those traits. May God be with us and peace be with you. Thank you.